I'm going to be showing you a very simple but important and useful test when analyzing single cell data. So I've just imported a few packages here and done a very simple pre-processing. And the important thing here is that I've normalized every cell to the same total counts. So I have an A data object with 8,000 cells and around 22,000 genes. So in my data, I actually have a gene that I called Zika, which corresponds to reads that map to the Zika genome. And in this toy example, I'm going to be using the gene name Zika, but of course you can use any gene that you're interested in. So the first thing we want to do is get the position that our gene falls within the A data object. And for that, we're going to use NumPy where, and then we can just pass A data var names, and then where does it equal our gene of interest, in this case Zika, and then we just need to pass 0, 0. So we get the position that that gene falls. And then since this is a virus, let's just, for another example, pick an interferon stimulated gene. And we see that that gene falls at this position. And then let's just save these as index one and index two. So from these indexes, we can actually extract all the cell expression values for that gene. So if we look at a data dot X. This is actually where our expression data is saved. And you see right now it's a sparse matrix. So what we want to do is to array to convert it to a dense matrix. And then we're just going to save this as data. And then if we look at the shape, it's just cells by genes. And then if we want all the cell values for a given gene, we can extract that from data. And let's just pass I1 for Zika and we get all the values for the 8,000 cells. And then from our imported stats package, we can do a Pearson's correlation and we can pass this array. And then we can compare it to the IFITM1 values. And this is the R value and then the P value. So we see that it's not significantly correlated. So Zika doesn't seem to stimulate this interferon stimulated gene. So we could go through and pick individual genes, or we can just test every single pairwise combination of Zika and other genes to find if there are any genes correlated to Zika. So we're just going to loop over all the genes in A data. And then I'm also going to make a little out list. So I1 is going to stay as Zika, but we're going to have to reset I2. Instead of picking the gene, we're going to use the gene in the loop. And then we're going to get the Pearson's correlation. Let me just call that res. And then we're going to append the gene name and then the R value and P value from res to out. So this should only take maybe 10, 15 seconds. So once that's done, let's convert out into a pandas data frame. All right, so we have the correlations between every single gene and Zika. And of course, we see Zika between itself is always going to be a correlation of one with a p-value of zero. But since we just did 21,000 tests, we need to correct for multiple testing. So I'm just going to do a simple Bonferroni correction. So I'm going to make a new column called Bon, and it's just going to be the p-value times the number of tests or the length of our data frame. And then while I'm at it, I'm also just going to make a negative log 10 p-value column, which I'll use just to do a simple graph in a minute. So we have the Bonferroni p-value corrected column and a negative log 10 p-value column. Now let's just filter this by our corrected p-value. So out of those 22,000 comparisons, we only had around 700 significant comparisons. I'm just going to sort this and then reorder the index column. OK, so just right off the bat, this is actually pretty exciting because we see the first three most correlated genes are antiviral genes, and they have a very low p-value. 
So from experience, the R value in single cell co-expression is never that high. Usually anything above like 0.1 tends to be very significant if you have a decent number of cells. I'm not going to go into anything too crazy, but let me just do a simple graph of the top 15 results. All right, so I've just graphed a negative log 10 p-value for the top 15 most co-expressed genes with Zika. But again, you can do this with any gene. It doesn't just have to be infected cells. I just thought Zika would be an interesting example for this video. In a future video, I'll show how to do co-expression networks 